back at it. Today is polishing day. I jumped the gun on the camera here a little bit, but uh, uh, the, this is sort of, we'll call this the prep work for polishing. Uh, remember, single stage paint. Uh, well, it's, I mean, it sure looks like single stage and these cars were single stage, so I'm sure it is. Uh, I had some friends, uh, my friend Spencer sent me uh, an email, a video message. He does a lot of farm equipment. He's done over 500 John Deere tractors that are all single stage and gave me a couple of tips. Uh, so we're gonna use wool, we're gonna go right to wool and uh, we're gonna use uh, a new product that I just got. Not, not new, but new to me. Uh, the Last Step, or Last Cut Plus, I think it's called. Uh, and so I ordered that from the rag company the other day because it was on my recommended list by the what am I missing. And, uh, and so luckily I just got the bottle the other day and so we're gonna use this, Last Cut Plus. And then we're gonna use blue foam, or sorry, blue wool. So we're gonna use this. And those guys, one inches. And then we're gonna use this beauty. Yeah, we're gonna use this so Rex was, was borrowing mine. Everybody keeps borrowing this thing because it's so freaking awesome. Uh, so we're gonna use the Merca. And then brand new. This is my first use of the new Rupes 15 millimeter, the HLR 15. This is my, I guess this is my unboxing of it. Oh, we got two extras. We're gonna blow through these pads, I'm sure. And we're rolling through this stuff. And they have the new, the new uh, blue, blue foam, which is sort of the medium stuff to replace the old blue. I think the old blue was brutal. Got some extra polish. Got some batteries. Just probably get these on the charger here if we're gonna do some, some polishing. So. Anyway, what I normally would do, which is what I'm doing now, I'd tape, tape the car up. So if you didn't watch the decon series, what I talked about, my preference is to decon the night before or the day before, let the car fully dry. Uh, then I can come and tape. It also helps with the fatigue. You know, I know you guys that are pros, you don't have that option. You just gotta go. You gotta get the darn thing done. Uh, you put, you, we could use compressed air and blow out all the cracks and crevices, but I find it's a little bit easier for me, since I have time, to just let the thing sit and dry off. And so I can come back the next day. It's actually been two days. We, we didn't get to polishing yesterday. And uh, it makes it easier to work with. Let's get these on the charger. I don't keep my polishers on like a permanent charger like I do like my Milwaukee or Ego stuff. Just because I'm not polishing every single day. Uh, I'm gonna hold on to this box just in case I don't like this thing. I can sell it to you on the cheap. Keep the goofy towel in there. This one's already been open because we took used it to take photos. It seems like it's gonna be pretty good super light, super ergonomic. I have a feeling that the Milwaukee's about to get punted. For those of you that hold on to the secret key, this isn't a secret key, it's just an Allen key. You can throw that away. You don't need to keep that. If you have a set of Allens. Okay, got this here. So what I'm using to tape, in case you're wondering, we've just updated our polishing package in the store as well. Uh, but what I'm using to tape here is 3M Precision. It's the Japanese tape, so this is uh, made in Japan. And uh, it's a thinner, it's not contourable, so it won't pull and stretch. I haven't found a good stretchy tape, uh, but this, uh, the 3M Precision is my favorite masking tape. Doesn't have, leave residue all over the place and uh, does a really good job at I wonder if I can just pop these off. These little duct covers. Probably would, but let's just tape it. So I, I, I would, I'd call myself a medium taper. I tape like a medium amount. I mean, it's better to just tape it than not. You know, it doesn't hurt. Tape is relatively, well, I guess this tape isn't very cheap, but tape is relatively inexpensive. And you can't hurt by taping. I should probably tape this here. This would probably fit in there nicely, perfect. Oh, 
a camera on this thing. Is that what that is? No. <laughs> no, that's a, that's a license plate hole. I was like, whoa, what's going on here? Cut that out. That was one of the dumbest things I've ever said. <laughs> it certainly looks like a camera. I'm like, wow, this has parking distance control. 1989, that's freaking sweet. I'm not worried about taping the reflectors. We'll deal with this if we, you know, happen to bump up against that. So don't, if you're buying tape, don't buy a lot of quarter inch tape. You're not gonna use a lot of it. I mean, I have the same roll. It's probably my original roll. Okay, at least I have the front clip taped up enough here to do some, some test spotting. You can do this little guy. So this car had some kind of wax or something on it, but it certainly wasn't coated. And the reason we know that is because it uh, very easily deconned. So in the decon, it killed the hydrophobics. And if it was a coating, it wouldn't have, it wouldn't have killed that. Tell you what, I do love how this car looks with the wheels off on the lift. It's the wheels that do it for me, those little baby wheels. I wonder if you could fit what you could fit in a car on the, one of these. Probably not very big. All right, let's put it down. People were yelling at us about the lift sagging. Well, when you put the, uh, a really narrow car and I didn't quite center it up. A scissor lift will pull a little bit. It'll pull in, but it's fine. The car's 2,600 pounds. It's a 7,000 pound lift, so we're good. Last thing I want to do, let me just put a little piece. I always put a little piece here just, just so I don't hit the wiper arm. These wiper arms are probably 200 bucks a piece now, if you can even get them. We'll just do that. I haven't polished in a while and I got some new stuff to play with. Okay, so we'll take this section here. Let me turn the lights off and show you what we're working with. Let's, uh, let me wipe it with some, um, with some panel wipe first. Let me turn my air compressor on. I don't know where this guy came from, but let's try it out. Little Tornador small handle thingy. I'm like a different human than last time I polished, right? I'm wearing jeans, I got a fancy watch on, I'm wearing a, a large shirt. I'm probably 35 pounds lighter than last time I polished. This is gonna be great. All right, let's see what happens here. Red single stage paint. Brand new polisher, brand new polish, and everything. It's gonna be good. I always like to blow out wool pads before I do anything with them. You know, this is to me the best part about having a cordless machine is that I don't have to frickin' um, unplug it. I just walk out the door. I don't like to blow out my pads, especially with the red paint that's gonna be all over it in my garage. The blue pads don't have as much, uh, much, uh, stuff the wool that falls off as the uh, as the yellow pads Ooh, these guys little product placement here for you it's available in the store you know i haven't opened this one up yet but you pop this open and pull it out the top but this is a microfiber roll and uh we have coming you can get this from rag company but ours is way cooler so you want to buy it from us uh, but we're gonna have a uh, a roll uh, a holder as well soon. It'll be like $470. <laughs> you better be ready for that one. I don't know how much it's going to be, but it ain't going to be cheap. So, oh geez. Where's my frickin'? I'm going to kill somebody. If they're not in here. It's 
Somebody's gonna get murdered, Mike. Oh, I'm an idiot. I'm gonna murder myself. <laughs> Thought it wasn't. In, this is the uh, sorry. This is the uh, the tester piece. So on this, I should be able to use the regular because this is metal. It won't work on plastic, but it should work here. All right, so we got 108 microns, 126, 125, 118, 95 down here. What all this can do for you is just tell you if like, if this was 180 and this was 20, and it was still shiny, you're about to, now this wasn't clear coated, but you're about to hit some metal here soon. Uh, and so what I'm looking for is just to see, it's a little thinner up here. Is there anything super concerning? Because this is not an exact science. So I think we're gonna be safe too, as we kind of go around the car. It's all pretty consistent. 164. He did say some things were repainted, so I think this panel was repainted. So that has a lot more paint on it. It does look newer. 202. This one's 100. Do something. Yeah, so I think this side of the car looks like it's been repainted. Yep. So that means this I can hammer down, no problem. And because there's been repaint, that means if I screw up, I can always send it over to old, old EAG and let him, let him do some more painting. Let's see what this guy's got. Whoa. Yo, that's some paint there, fellas. I don't think this has been repainted at all. This is factory. Yikes. This car, we're safe to go. Let's go. 179. Let's see here. Let me turn the, uh, turn the fancy one on, see if I can remember how to use this freaking thing. So this guy, this is how you know you're a detailing baller when you have one of these laying around and you never freaking use it. So this is the multi-layer, so you put a little goop. So this, theoretically, since it's single stage, would have primer. So base coat, single coat? Does the single stage still have primer? I think they do. All right, so we got 124. So there must be like a primer coat, base coat, top coat. or it's just making it up. So you need this little goop here, but this can give us a reading on the wing or the, the plastics. 166 on here, so it should be okay. Three eighty six. So this probably has been repainted. And then here one thirty eight. Okay. So we're somewhere between 90 and 200. So we should be okay. I'm gonna do the podcast. This is kind of wild. I got a lot of new stuff going on here. It's been a while in detailing, huh? You know, it's kind of using kind of the same process. I'm gonna try some new stuff here. So we're gonna do this new polish, new polisher, a little two stage paint. Everybody's yelling at me for doing too much home stuff, right? Well. I'm gonna shove this detail in right down your throat here because I got a lot to do. The Raptor needs dialed in. The uh, E36 needs dialed in. I got two E30s to mess with here. A lot going on. So I guess this color is Zenobarot, not Hanarot. Zenobarot? Yeah. And then the E36 Oh, brilliant. Well, let's look at the... Uh, I need to look at the hyperdressing anyway here. That hood is wild, how that works. 
Yeah, there it is. Look at how good that looks. See, look, everything's beautiful. Didn't touch it. So we'll have a little bit of wipe off here, you know, just a little bit of, but and a little bit of extra wipe here, but just a nice little wipe down later on and we're freaking beautiful. That's what's so great about hyperdressing. Actually, I wonder if I want to polish it up here like this, separate panels. That'll work out pretty well. Okay, so let's turn the lights off. Let's show you what we're working with here. I'll figure out which color. I think, uh, I think that works best. So it's kind of pitted, lots of little scratches. You know, some of this stuff isn't gonna come out, but I think we can improve it a bunch. It's like these little scratches here. I can't feel it with my fingernail, but you just see all this kind of stuff going on. You know what I did want to do? Let me grab, um, let me grab some eraser. We'll just work on this spot right here because there's a lot going on. There's a, that's probably gonna pull that right off. I should order some Dr. Color Chip for this. So see all these scratches here? Can you see all that mm -hmm. in this angle? So we'll see if we can address that. This is gonna get dicey here and, and make sure we don't mess that up. Spread it around on one. This is terrible. I'm gonna need the three inch for here. I don't like this. I'm having to fight this polish here. So I'm looking through the polish. Oh, it's scary a little bit. Is the seal I'm working with here? I'm looking through it. That's why I kept making passes. Again, we're not going to get this to 100%, but we can make it look good. We're going to ruin these towels. We're going to ruin these pads. Wow. Whoa. That's freaking really good, dude. What do you think about that, huh? The other thing you have to do with single stage, you have to be cognizant of filling, you know, and so that's what Spencer was talking about is you get a lot of, uh, you get a lot of filling that happens from polishes and so the last cup doesn't have any of that stuff. Let's do a, uh, let me get the three inch going here because I need to get into that, that edge there. Yeah, that Rupes, man, I, I don't like that. I mean, that's I mean, my first pass, but it's fighting me. Like it feels more like a, like a Flex 3401. Like it's just wanting to walk away from me the whole time. I don't like that. The LHR 15 doesn't do that. The Milwaukee doesn't do that. This doesn't do that. So just, just listen to the difference. It's the most magical experience of all time. I talk to this, I talk to you about this a lot, but remember that in order to work the, to get to the edge, so I get the edge done, if I roll the pad over, then it's gonna miss the edge. It's gonna cup the edge. And so I need to bring the edge of the backing plate, not the edge of the pad, but the edge of the backing plate up to the edge of the edge of the, you know, the surface in order to, to get it to polish out and not have a scratched up edge. Plus I want to be cognizant, I don't want to blow through the, you know, the paint on the edge. I need to be 
careful here. Gosh, I love this machine so much. You know what I need? And so we have this kit coming. It'll be an OG exclusive for a while anyway. Is the smaller batteries. So we're gonna have a kit with a small battery version because the freaking thing tends to hit the oh, I need to charge it. The big battery tends to hit the uh the panel. This polish doesn't wipe off very very comfortably. I think I'm gonna need a, a little eraser. Okay, so you can see, because it's a compound, you can see how hazy, see the, the difference there? It's hazy here, it's not there. So now, we need to figure out. So that's correcting it, it's getting all the scratches out. Now let's see what it looks like. How am I gonna finish this thing? So what I'm doing here is a test spot to figure out what's going to work. You know, what combination of process and product is going to do the job as efficiently as possible while removing the least amount of paint possible. So this is the final polish. I'm going to try this out. Well, that's better. Maybe it was just the combination of the, the wool pad. Because the foam pad has more interface, I can uh, get into this, scoop into this a little bit better than I could with the uh, finishing, or the, uh, the cutting pad. So I'm finishing a little outside the footprint of where I, where I did the, uh, the compounding. That's no fun. I'd say that's going to do the trick there, people. <laughs> that looks pretty darn good. I got all that, all that surface level scratching out. But, you know, doing single stage paint is giving you a good look at what you're doing, because you're removing clear coat like that too, but it's clear. And so when you're using it, we're abrading the surface or using an abrasive material to remove paint. So we're removing some of the paint. And to do so, so what I'm not gonna do on this, so like this scratch is not gonna come out. I'm not gonna chase that. I'm gonna do that same procedure, roughly four passes. With the compound, I'm just kinda doing it by feel, you know, and I'm looking through, looking through, looking through this, the polish at the scratches, um, trying to make sure I get a good clean edge. There's still some pitting here, you know, from rocks hitting. Um, but I was able to remove the scratches from it. I could probably continue to hammer on that, but I'm not going to. So there's like little pock marks that they're not going to come out. I could probably refine it a little bit further, but I think that simple two-step process is going to be pretty safe. Um, we're removing some material, but not a ton. Um, you know, I think we're going to be safe on the whole car, even, you know, the repainted versus the regular areas. And, um, I like this, this polish combo. Um, that was a good suggestion, suggestion from, from Spencer. Saved me a lot of time trying to figure out. I mean, I guess I could try and play with some other stuff to see if some stuff would work better. But like all this here, let me just prove it to you. Remember all those little scratches there, Mike? See, they're all gone. I th I'd say that's a, you know, but you know, up here, so we got rid of all the deep stuff or sorry, all the surface level stuff. Versus, you know, we're down here. 
looks deeper, clearer, cleaner. And then we got out, say, 80, 80, 85% of the imperfections. Yeah, come over here again. Cover on the hat. Oops, I'm going to get my towel. So we've got some. So there's, that area was actually worse than this down here, but there's some, you know, some of that toweling. This car's probably been dry wiped a lot. So we're getting all that out. And we're removing some oxidation and stuff as well that tends to happen to, you know, single stage paints. Single stage is softer than most clear coats. It's gonna be great. Yeah, and I haven't really, I'm gonna go over that. I'm gonna go through this section again. I didn't really polish that here, but that, that'll just, it'll look a little less in your face because it's, um, yeah, I can feel that one. Um, because we'll clean out the dirt in the, in the peak or in the, the valley of the thing. Let's go see what it's like to uh, blow these pads out. This is the part that's gonna suck. I'm probably gonna have to use a lot more pads too because it's this really soft paint loads up. I see what he's saying. Almost none of that's coming off. I might have to order, oh wait, don't I have that pad washer? The one that I put on the table? I'm gonna need that pad washer. It really should come from, so I'm gonna come from outside or from inside out instead of going and doing this and then reaching over it. It's not doing well with this pad. Take me a while to figure this machine out. Yeah, I'm gonna need a pad washer. Let me just call, make sure no one, I need a reneg on it. Hey, that pad washer thing that I stuck on the, on the countertop in the, uh, in, the yes. in the conference room, is it still sitting there? Cause I need it. <laughs> you need it, okay. Did somebody um, take it? It's the detail what guard. What came to your mind? Well, I need it for this freaking single stage business. Oh, it's single stage. Dang. Okay, yeah, it's still on the on the counter. Okay, yeah. The the pads the uh, pads don't aren't blowing out, so I need to wash okay. them out after okay. after each yeah. use. I'm gonna have to do that. Ah, this thing is so hard. If you don't have one of these yet, or if you're just watching this for the first time. If you've got 880 bucks, and if you polish one car in your life, you want this. World class. This car is gonna look insane when it's coated and done. Somebody needs to buy this thing. Old Matty Mormon's gonna spend 30 hours on this sucker. Somebody's gonna get hooked up. Yeah, the polish doesn't like the wipe off. But that's what we're gonna have to do. We have to go through that. It gets real hazy, and then we come back with foam and uh, finish it up. I'm gonna be washing out my pads, otherwise I'm gonna have to change them out every couple of uses. No, it does not like this pad. Let's see if the thinner lower pile wipes a little better. I think I like that better. I'm just gonna throw these towels away. 
I don't want to ruin my darn washer and dryer. Yeah, this is going to be good. Just cleaning it up. Yep. It's hard because I'm always looking for perfect, but some of this car will be perfect. The hood, because of all the impacts it's taken, won't be. But like the fenders and stuff are gonna come out 95%. Kinda of thinking I wanna use a little bit more product. I'm gonna try it. This hood prop actually works really well. Having a propped up hood, I don't have to use a tool or a roll of tape. This polish, maybe it wipes off better on clear coat, but man, this is annoying. I'm gonna try something. This is Maddie's I'm not telling juice. I wonder if I have enough in this bottle to do the whole car if I like the secret sauce here. I find it annoying wiping that crap off. I mean, it's working, but. I just want the nano on that little, little lip there. It's kind of hard to get. Okay, it's not the polish. This doesn't wipe off either. Yeah, the last cut left a much nicer finish. Yeah, it's quite easy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it didn't wipe off any easier. All right, secret juice denied. That's probably toast already. You know that, I cleaned up that haze, or a lot of, large percentage of it. Yep, Spencer was right. Some good stuff. Never thought I'd see the day where I'm pad washing it up. It's gonna look insane when I'm done with this though. It's gonna make me buy a red car next week. <laughs> Just not this one. It's pretty good, yeah. All right, how do I use this stupid thing? Actually, oh, there you go. Okay, you just gotta yep. push order. Okay. I guess there wouldn't be any reason why we can't just fill the thing up. have to get some uh, coveralls getting dirty I'm not washing squat freaking pad washing is dumb need the lake country what I'll have to do is just blow through pads and then wash them and let them dry overnight and then do just two cycles and then freaking throw them away all right back to it this thing back on. You can almost work this polish right off the car. Yeah, man, that looks good. I just want to finish this section so I can finish out the whole hood and see how it looks. Get rid of all that haze. It's coming out really nice, yeah. 
Like I said, the hood, the hood is you know, quite a bit more pitted and beat up. The fenders, the trunk, all the rest of the car, it's gonna come out really great. The roof and hood are sort of the most banged up. All right, let me do this last section here and then we can finish the whole hood and see what kind of result we're gonna be dealing with here. Where did the three inch go? See all this here, all this mess, scratch, 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 blob. <laughs> pretty darn good. It's better than I thought it was going to be. All those little Z scratches are all, there's a few little deep remnants that I'm not going to chase. Uh, if this was my car, I would probably chase them, but I'm not going to do that. So now, just to make sure that our process is good, I'm going to finish the whole hood and then the hood will be done. Well, prior to coating anyway. I'm, all, I'm half tempted to uh, do two sets of passes on this. Let's not push our luck here. It's, I'd say it's 80 and I could get it to 90, but I'm gonna have to remove some more paint. You know, 80 for what this hood is gonna do. See, on, with this pad, this, this polisher is magical. That other is just grabby. Okay, now it's smooth as silk. That's what we're going to be working with here. Not bad. Man, just the depth. This red is wild. That's good. That finishes really nicely in comparison to the haziness here. You can see the line right there. Really cool. But it's not really any different than having to do anything special. Just think of the overhead photos of this thing. It'd be freaking crazy. I'm finding that I really need a lot of product here. because I thought it was going to be some crazy 14-step process. Two sets of passes, simple two-step. Making it pretty. And then when I blow this off, you see how it's shiny? So it doesn't, the red doesn't go away, but the shininess goes away. So that how, that's how I know I'm actually blowing out the pad. All right, I'm bored. Now, now I'm done. Yeah. I got all my fix, my detailing fix for the next six months. The only problem is I got to do the whole freaking car now. I don't have to, I don't have to do any of this. So that's the good thing. I've got to train the EAG guys. So I might save that car to train them on. Although not the best car to train somebody on. So on, on a foam pad, this is definitely better than Milwaukee. On the wool pad, like right now, this is beautiful. It's like a great experience. This is probably the best polishing experience outside of the Merca that exists. Problem is, when I'm doing microfiber or wool, it feels like a flex force rotation. Feels like my battery's dying. 
that's another thing in Milwaukee's battery tech. You know, they don't do that. And the Milwaukee batteries certainly last longer than that. Way longer. Just doing a hood. It's beautiful, man. It's so fun. So what was this thing again? Two? Was it two? Yeah, two. This one is, yeah. 200 bucks. So I'm gonna show you guys something's gonna blow your frickin' socks off here. Not for me, but, well, maybe. Or I'm, you know, I'm gonna show you here. So this is corded. Apparently I'm gonna have to bring a lot of pads. These pads that I got aren't gonna be enough. So we need to plug we need to plug it in. But this is a $200 polisher. I'm going to bring this puppy in from Germany via China. Designed in Germany. I've only done like some non-discriminate discriminating polishing. I loved it. So let's do an, some actual polishing with it. I bet you 50 bucks I like this better than the, <laughs> the cordless Rupes here. Let's see. I have to remember how to do, do this with a cord. I don't know what I'm doing here. All right, so let's go here. Man, for a beginner, like it's so much more upright. It just stays, it's hard to, it's hard to even lift the pad, it stays flat. Okay, so when I come up in here, still rotating. Still in the column. Thing, I'm telling you guys, this thing's really, really good. The only thing I don't like is this big goose neck here. We don't need that. But this is for, be for beginners. So they've done a great job. Like all the weight is where it needs to be. Like all the Rupes, even the LHR 15, wants the lift. You have to kind of balance it. It's just so much more balanced. But to get people into the machine like this, man, it's freaking good. It's even better than I thought. The only thing that sucks is now you gotta unplug me. There may or may not be a cordless version coming. It won't be 200 bucks, but it'll, it won't be 800. So now let me put this on the Milwaukee. Just so happen to have one right here. Gosh, by the end of this, we're gonna have every polisher out. So this is like 280. So this has been my long-term entry-level polishing recommendation was the Griot's G15. Still long throw machine, 15 millimeter orb, just like all of them. So we had brought this in the store because, you know, there's a progression in life. So the thing I like about the LE is that how beginner friendly it is. I can work around the stalling, but if you're brand new at it, It's not even close. The 
looks like miles better. And I like the sound of the gear set better on Yeah. Yeah, everything about it's better. The only thing I like better on the Grios is that top handle thing. He's not as bulky. No question, better battery. Not even close. But the battery is sort of a non-event in all of these, so. It's much heavier. This is definitely smoother, but that seems like it does a better job of not stalling. Again, yeah, the stalling I don't really care much about. I could fix that if I cared. Yeah. It's the uh, the handle. Like there's just not a good spot to like this turn down here. I don't like it. It's in the way. I know why they did it, but this, the natural tendency is for this to lean up. And so with the Milwaukee, just holding it outside like this, but there's a lot less vibration in the head here. What we'll find out is when I'm in here, you need to put like a camera in here when I'm, no one's around and I'm in here working. Like which one? <laughs> Which one will I grab? grab yeah. All right, so that's a wrap on the hood. Let's get this wiped down. And we'll, I'll be working on this this weekend, theoretically, if I don't get lazy. It's the most um, upright machine I've ever used. And clearly, just after using it for one set of passes, it would be the easiest for me to teach somebody how to polish. And that's, that's big, because most people that are gonna be in that price point aren't gonna have experience, and they're gonna be doing a lot of stuff wrong. It's not that it's that hard to learn, but some people just don't have it, you know, and are never gonna have it, and so why not give them the, the machine that's gonna give them the easiest opportunity? Give them a DA instead of, because a lot of people that are brand new, we'd put them on a, uh, you'd put them on a, um, a force rotation machine because it won't stall. I need a little pad. It's just looking a little hazy around there from the, using, trying to use the bigger pads. Cleaned it up. Beautiful. That's good. That's gonna be the ticket there, folks. I yeah, mean, we removed almost all the scratches. So I'm gonna try this little, uh, little one inch LE as well. Got a mess going on here. I don't like how big that backing plate is. Why would they make the backing plate so big? It's like a freaking half inch too big. It's like an inch and a half backing plate. Look yeah, at that. Interesting. Yeah, it's definitely big. I mean, I don't like how big this freaking thing is. But it's like 180 bucks or something like that. 200 bucks. Yeah. But again, if you're starting out, 400 bucks into two machines. These guys are like innovating. They're not just stealing. That was something that was really important to me. 
I made them do a vlog, like a real-time vlog of their headquarters. Like, what is the, what's the deal? Who are you people? Notice a lot of the stuff, like giraffe tools. Who's giraffe tools? Who, who, who are they? Like, it's just some rando, you know, Chinese conglomerate. Where this guy, what's his name, Sebastian? Yeah. He's like a crazy mad scientist. That's a wrap on the hood, people. I like it. Kind of want to coat it right now. I'm sure you, I'm sure you thought the car looked good before, but now. All right. So I guess that's a wrap for this episode. I'm probably gonna work on it some this weekend. We'll catch some more next week when uh, when we're back. I'll probably finish the you know front clip and hood. And just kind of work on a little bit at a time, in between counting and categorizing, organizing tools. But the whole car is going to look like this, only better because the hood is the most beat up. <laughs> <laughs>